Right, I'm here at the Ruler Classic and it's all kicking off behind me. It's going to be like presenting in front of a live studio audience as I go through various bits of tech here because I've been told there's the creme de la creme of bike tech. Let's see what I can find. Right, I'm here with Alan from Hope. Now, Hope Technology, I've got quite a bit of experience with. I mean, way back when I was a teenager, I had one of your screw-on rear hubs, and I've upgraded it since then, I must say. Yeah, <laughs> and well, also Lotus are on there too. And Lotus, that excites me because of Roger Moore driving the uh, Lotus Esprit under the sea and the spy who loved me. But this is a completely different kettle of fish. I've seen a few pictures on the internet, but I knew I was coming here. So tell me about this bike. Where has it come from? Uh, well, it's just a partnership between ourselves and Lotus to make a bike for, for the Olympic team, really. So it's just um, evolved over a few years of work. Sort of okay, how many years has it taken? Because it is completely different. If I look at the rear end and the front end, and I'm looking at a few other different details here, how long has the project taken in, in total? We weren't necessarily at the beginning, but I think since Rio, British Cycling Institute has been working on that and it's evolved since then and come to this after after sort of four years. Cool. Now, these rear stays, you've got to talk to me about these because I've never seen anything as wide as this on a bike other than, you know, a, a fancy carbon pannier rack or something like that. What's the thinking behind putting them so far out and, I mean, the, the actual profile of them? It's all to do with including the rider in their aerodynamics because quite often they do the wind tunnel testing with the rider when you do the bike and it's but it's integrating what effect the bike has the rider has on the bike so you basically want the wider on the front and rear so that people the rider's legs so that wind interrupted with the forks and the rear stays and it, it's in line with the uh, rider's legs basically so it's all one piece yeah and uh, when i look at these handlebars let's have a little look i mean they're sort of screwed in. I guess that's the correct way of saying it. Um, at, the, at the top there is actually you can change actually the, the different handlebars, if you like, into the forks. Yeah, there is uh, different handlebars, whether they're pursuit or sprint bikes, basically, because you're going to interchange between the bikes. So there's a 3D printed titanium handlebar. How cool is that? 3D printed. I mean, if I look at the dropouts as well, now the front dropouts, I've got to just have a quick look at these. They're kind of like curved. It's, it, they go, they're, well, they're really deep for a start. It's hard to, I mean, obviously the pictures will explain it a lot better than I can, but it looks like you've got like, quite a fancy dropout or, or skewer cap. Um, but is the, the axle, that looks to be sort of oblong or overlaid. Yeah, it is all shaped basically to fit in with the actual dropouts. So both front and rear uh, axles, because we can, our hubs now, we can machine all the parts ourselves and integrate things really easily. So it's, it makes a big difference to be able to do everything in house ourselves. Yeah. Right, and I've got to ask you, people out there are always thinking to themselves, what bottom bracket standard has it got on it? Because it's always something up for debate. So I can't see it because we've got a quite monstrous chain ring on there. It's not something I'm going to push around on my paper round. But uh, what bottom bracket are you using? It is the look uh, cranks fit in there. So that's a very large bottom bracket to be able to get the one piece crank through. So it's, a, so it's unique to their system to be able to get the, uh, the axle right through there and the actual cranks as well, and arms. Brilliant. Right, stay tuned because I reckon we're going to have a full in-depth video on this bike pretty soon. But before actually I go, I'm just going to pick up something I've spotted and it's possibly the world's smallest disc wheel. Well, here's, here's half of one, or actually it's more than half, isn't it? That's probably about two, th about two thirds. Yep, yeah, that's it, yep. Yeah. Check out this. Right, what is going on here then? Uh, well, as part of this project, obviously we are more on wheels and hubs as well ourselves. So it's an obvious choice to start doing wheels for ourselves for the bike. So we've actually, as we've been learning more and more about carbon ourselves, we've we sort of think a bit laterally compared to normal carbon people because we can machine things ourselves and we don't follow the normal protocols that people would use. So we've actually now made a one-piece wheel, whereas normally this wheel would be made up of two discs, a rim, and a hub. But we can actually make a mould that will do everything at once. So we can lay up all the carbon inside the mould, two halves together, back inside and inflate it and actually mould a one piece wheel. And it ends up like this. Right, this is absolutely mind blowing. I mean, I remember you, you say, you know, you do things differently at your place. I remember when I worked in a different part of the industry, sometimes I'd ring up and ask to speak to someone and they'd say, oh, he's out on his bike actually. Uh, which I think is great, the fact that you know, you're know you manufacturing everything in-house and you're so involved with it all. And um, I'm looking forward 
to, well, seeing a lot more of this bike because it's certainly different. Right, when I think Colnago, I quite often think fancy paint jobs. Harking back to my younger years and the Master Olympic bikes in steel when they had the really sort of decorative top tubes on them and everything. But this one here is absolutely mind-blowing. The C64, so it's a lugged carbon frame and just check out the paintwork on it. It reminds me of kind of the ice when it forms on a windshield or windscreen of a car overnight. And the first thing you see in the morning is this sort of fancy pattern sometimes. But it's not that, obviously. It is a kind of a, an icy blue. It's even been carried right the way through to the Ceramic Speed oversized pulley wheel system down there on the rear mech. You know, we've got the seat post, we've got the stem too. And whilst I just mentioned the stem, if you look, it's got a nicely integrated sort of bottom cover here for all those cables and hoses to go inside of. That will make bike builders all over the world rejoice, or bike mechanics, certainly, because it won't be that troublesome to put together. Um, now, it does have a full Campagnolo Super Record EPS group set on there. So electronic shifting and everything. It is a fully Italian affair. We don't have any pedals on there, but if there were, I sh I'm sure there would be some Campagnolo ones too. We've got Vittoria tires, Bora WTO uh, wheels, and this is absolutely bling. Oh, and we've got an Italian saddle too, Prologo Scratch 2. And that's one of the, the ones that has the CPC technology on the top, so it's essentially almost like mini suckers that are on the end of uh, octopus tentacles, I think they're called tentacles, that essentially grip onto the lycra of your shorts so that you remain in the correct place when you're riding. But obviously it doesn't suck you in. You can still move around on the saddle as and when needed. That actually comes from astronauts or Formula One drivers, I've been told, that sort of technology. There we are. Nice. Celeste. Right, brand new shoe now coming out of City. And when I think City, I think the traditional Italian cycling shoe brand. It harks me again back to my teenage years and pouring over cycling magazines. Well, these new ones here, they're the 60th anniversary model. And I've been told that no snakes were harmed in the making of them because it's not actually real snake skin, it's just a print. But recently, I suppose City, a lot of their shoes have been quite over-engineered, if you like, so a lot of fastening and ratchet systems on them. But this, well, they've become pretty much paired back because you've just got one ratchet on here. So it's a dial style system, which is on top of the tongue. And it's not built onto the tongue or anything because with a handy flip of the lever, you can pull that away and release your foot in no time at all. You've got a single Velcro across the front. They've also changed the inside of the shoes from white to black. So there's no uh, unsightly marks if you were to have some odd colored socks on or anything like that. And a handy little bit here at the front there is that vent, which you can actually unscrew and just slide it backwards, allowing, well, increased ventilation or slide it back in the winter for decrease in ventilation. I love finishing touches like that. And importantly, they're pretty lightweight too. And I reckon these are the ones which we spotted on the feet of uh, Vincenzo Nibali back at one of the Grand Tours this year, but not in the snake skin. Here we go, the Ribble SLE. SLE, super light electric, I reckon it must stand for because it is pretty light for an e-bike, just 11 kilos. Now the motor is built in the back wheel here, so it's a hub-based system, e-bike motion is the brand behind it. So if you wanted to not run it as an e-bike, you could simply swap out the back wheel and put another one in and go out riding on it. So you've got a really versatile bike there, I guess two bikes in one, you could say. Full SRAM Red ETAP HRD setup, fully integrated hoses just popping out of course on the stays of both the fork leg and also the rear chain stay but I reckon one of the best things about this bike has to be the glittery paintwork now glittery paint seems to be the most in thing right now in bikes when it comes to their pa custom paint uh, something I'm not very good at let's face it if you've seen any of my other videos but this one looks a million dollars I reckon because you've also got the integrated bars too. They're painted in that same finishing colors. They've got another bike here too, and let's go over and have a look at that one. Moving on then from the SLE, we've got the SLR, R standing for road, and this bike weighs just 5.4 kilos. If you look at it, you'd think, yeah, that's gonna be around about the UCI limit of 6.8, but thanks to the THM clavicular crank set and well, a pretty impressive frame layup, it comes down to that weight, but it could be even lighter. Uh, I mean, for a start, these decals, these gold decals, they're not actually decals or decals, whichever way you swing, they're actually 
24 karat gold. So slightly heavy, I guess you could say. Uh, and also an integrated bar and stem on there. But again, the finishing touches on this bike, just like the other, a second to none. I love the gold stripes on the back of that handlebar and stem and also the gold bar end plugs too. And the Cane Creek EE brakes, well, a pair of them weigh the same as one Dura Ace one, roughly, give or take a gram or two. Oh, and if you don't like it there, well, we've got a gold chain, a bit of bling. Oh yeah, love a bit of bling. The wheels, they're from Lightweight, and they're the Gubfelsturm. I hopefully got that one right. And a real fine detail, actually, is the fact that there's a little magnet on the blade of the spoke underneath a little bit of uh, heat shrink there. So, of course, it can be picked up by any uh, crank, or sorry, chainstay-based sensor. And we've also got a carbon fiber pulley cage on the Dura Ace rear mech. Tasty bit of kit, that. Right, brand new, literally launched today, is this new Gore jacket in collaboration with street artists, I guess you could say, or street brand Romance. I'm the first to admit I don't know that much about them, but they have done some collaborations in the past with, I think it was a Dutch guy called Pete Padder, and it was a specialized bike that went to auction. It looked pretty cool. This looks pretty cool too, because this is a first, because they are managing to actually print onto this Gore shake dry uh, fabric, which in the past hasn't been possible, but through some digital technology they can. And well, this rather fetching 80s tie dye is the result of it. But each and every one is actually individually made because the way the fabric is cut and also colored means that you're not gonna have one that anyone else has. And I like the fact that you can have that. Now, if we look at the detailing on it, we've got a little pocket here. Now, it's not just a pocket to store your valuables in or maybe your mobile phone, something like that on the ride, but you can also pack the jacket inside of it, which means inside of your jersey pocket, put that nicely stowed out of the way. And all of these details too are also reflective, which is always nice, a little bit of safety. Right, now I've just got to go and research who this romance chap is, or chapess, don't know. Right, you didn't think I could come to a show and not find some retro tech. Well, this bike here from 1989, it belongs to Dave Rayner, a rider who was sadly killed. Now, the Rayner Fund is a fund which actually raises money to send young promising riders abroad. And well, some of the riders they've sent abroad have literally won the world's biggest races. It's an absolutely brilliant foundation and I'm a huge fan of it. Let's have a look at this bike. Uh, now it's a rally and it's built out of Reynolds 753, both the frame and forks. Quite often, a lot of the time, forks would be built out of 531. I've got a feeling the 753 was a bit more difficult to build from. And when someone built a frame out of 753, you actually had to be approved to build them. And you had to undergo a little exam. And part of that exam was to build a tiny little bike. Anyway, all of that aside, this bike is being restored and it's absolutely brilliant. For a start, we've got these Campagnolo rims here. They're the Sigma ones. I think the uh, coating on it was called Hardox. We've also got a yellow turbo saddle. Coloured saddles were a really big thing back in the late 80s and early 90s. Of course, Campagnolo Delta brakes on there. I love this bike. I always say, oh, I dreamt of having one of those as a youngster. But as a youngster, the Rally Banana team was basically the the kind of, I don't know, the Manchester United, if you're into soccer or football. And it was the team that won everything it seemed to be in the UK. I absolutely love it. And having met Dave uh, once, he actually made me feel really, really welcome. Right, you'll have to excuse if there's anyone walking in front because we are at a live show after all. But this is a Tatichi frame. Now, some of you will remember when we did a first look at them and we rode them off road and everything. And the thin top tube here offers a bit of like a leaf spring, a little bit of vibration dampening. But if there's one thing I can offer to any exhibitor or potential exhibitor, if you want someone to stop and look at your bikes, then you custom paint them. Now this one here, it's got all sorts of different things on there. And apparently, according to the artist, Luca DiMaggio, uh, they all uh, sort of detail. It's like an autobiography, but in pictures of his life. And I love it. There's all sorts of quite eerie um, faces on there, including I think it's a bit like a wolf or some sort of animal, something like that, I'm not sure. Some of them also look a bit like gargoyles, but I think it's that sort of attention to detail which I absolutely love about bikes. And these dots up here, they remind me of the Colnago. I think it's a Futura, a very, very rare bicycle indeed. I wonder what those uh, remind him of. Probably his bike, I suppose, in the autobiography. I don't know, I'm, I'm lost. Got to get inside an artist's head. That's never gonna be easy, is it? I think it's easy, we just look at the bikes. 
Now we're talking a pair of Mavic Comet Pro Carbon UST disc wheels here. These are limited to just 50 pairs. The reason being, these are the London edition. So, kind of printed onto the rim here, we've got all sorts of things which are famous in London. So we've got London Bridge, we've got a phone box, we've got Box Hill, we've got Lee Hill, we've got the Underground, we've got the Union Jack, or the Union Flag, I should say, the London Bus, we've got a crane, we've got all sorts on here. They're 65 millimeters deep and they're limited, like I said, to just 50 pairs. But they also utilize a new free hub style that Mavic are now using. So instead of using a traditional pool style uh, system inside of the free hub, they're using a couple of ratchets there which play on one another. Now the hubs themselves are totally sort of user serviceable without any tools at all. As you can see, I'm starting to take them apart here and hoping that nothing falls on the floor. Otherwise the, uh, the staff on the stand may well tell me to get my grubby hands off of it. But one of the great things about this is that previously Mavic hubs used to be uh, adjusted or the, the preload could be adjusted by the user themselves. And unless you're really uh, up on your mechanics, you wouldn't necessarily know what you're doing. But they've done away with that. So they've now got a circlip and a wavy washer, meaning that the adjustment is done all on its own. I love that. And also I love the fact we've got a cutaway hub to actually explain and show these things. And the sound, check out the free hub sound check. I know that's what you're all waiting for, really. Right, I've just met a guy, Peter Martin, who probably rivals me when it comes to collecting things regarding cycling. But his collection certainly outweighs mine because sadly I left mine in the house when I sold it and I never had time to pack it away. No, I wasn't uh, trying to run away from any drugs barons or anything like that. But here we've got collections of all sorts of trinkets, basically, that you can find from the caravan at the Tour de France and other Grand Tours and stuff. So. Remember, ahead of the race, about two hours before, you get a procession of vehicles that go along and while they throw out free promotional material to the members of the public who wait patiently at the roadside, we have got all sorts here on this wall. So we've got um, little bags, cushions, key rings, you name it, bike lights, even a shampoo sample there, playing cards. I'm pretty jealous actually, some of these little things you can rattle and irritate the hell out of someone. There's something there that says button on it but it's not button. If you're aware of what that could be in Dutch, then you're well aware of exactly what that is. Uh, we've also got here a sort of a display, if you like, of that uh, publicity caravan in progress. So there it is right at the top there, the Credit Lyonnais. So that's the lion that the uh, yellow jersey winner that day gets awarded each and every day on the podium and so forth. I quite like that there. Fly spray. Why on earth does a fly spray company sponsor the Tour de France? Must have a lot of flies, I suppose. Uh, and we've got some sort of mustard pot and all sorts. And then of course the cyclists, people who collect things like this, I absolutely love. And while he's been collecting it, I think I've already said it since 1996, back when Bjarne Ries won the Tour de France. This is apparently about a fifth of the collection. I'm pretty jealous. I might have to see what I've got at home and see if he wants to do any swaps. Nice. Brand new then from a company called Exeger. It's something called Powerfoil and they're gonna be collaborating with the brand POC. Now, what exactly is this? Well, it's kind of like a, a solar generator, if you like, but it's just 0.6 of a millimeter thick and it can be sort of disguised to look like other things. So here we've got a wood style, we've got a carbon style, we've even got a, a leather style and it even feels like leather too. That's the rubber one there. But what this means is you could seamlessly integrate it into a helmet and it could give you endless light because it charges indoors as well. Whereas, well, regular solar panels only charge outdoors via the sun. So that could be very good for those of you who forget your bike lights and well, you need a smart helmet. This should be coming, I've been told, by December next year. And that's gonna be the first project. And after that, I guess you could say the world is their oyster. Right, this Fesca on show actually belongs to a customer who is in Bangkok, but the bike is on display here at the Ruler Classic, and it is something which instantly caught my attention because it looks like porcelain, it looks like China. You know, the blue detailing on it, but all this blue detailing, it's not just, you know, hidden in there, their logo or their brand name. It is in fact telling a story of all different parts of this customer's life. Now this project apparently took 13 months because they had to keep doing their drawings, sending them off for him to approve and then it would come back and everything would be okay and then something else would be added and everything. That is the level of personalization and customization they go to. We've got all sorts on here. We've got uh, almost like a, a, a picture or a, a diagram of someone from Fesca working on the bike. Then we've got someone working on a computer. We've got someone on a unicycle playing a flute. All of these things are part of that customer's life. 
The bike, it is pretty light. It's about 6.2 kilos. When I asked the guy from Vesca, how much does it weigh today? It's not that light. It's 6.2 kilos. It's got a Celia Italia uh, C59 saddle on there. We've got Cane Creek E brakes and everything. The gold, yeah, that's right. It's actually gold leaf. So it's 24 karat gold leaf and it's applied via this sort of pen which uses uh, a transparent glue. You cannot see when it's applied to it. The level of detail on it, I can understand why it took 13 months. When I look at bikes like this, it just makes me wonder what would happen if it got a scratch. Just don't get a scratch. There we go, some of the latest tech from the Ruler Classic. And I can't believe I've never been here before. It's been absolutely brilliant. And there's been some real gems that I've managed to uncover too. Let me know what you thought of it down there in the comments section below. And as ever, remember to like and share this video with your friends too. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, click that little notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. And also remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And now for two more absolutely cracking videos, click just down here and just down here.